Thank you to those who've uh, joined us today for our presentation on legacy CAD data. Just to get started today, I'll introduce uh, Chris Snyder. So Chris Snyder is our field tech services manager. He leads a team of application engineers in the Midwest, and he's been with CETI for nine years and in the CAD industry, uh, even longer than that. So his experience today is going to be super helpful as we talk about how to deal with legacy CAD data and getting started if you're moving to SOLIDWORKS or if you already have SOLIDWORKS and you've got some data, legacy data from a previous CAD system, how to best deal with that. We're going to tackle those topics today. At this time, I'll hand it over to uh, Mr. Chris. Thanks, Scott. I put my email address here on the title screen if you want to uh, jot that down real quick, and I'll have it at the end as well. If you get some questions or have something come up afterwards, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. So today we want to talk about your legacy CAD data. That's why you came. Um, this is a, is a conversation we have uh, quite often with um, people that are getting ready to, to use SOLIDWORKS, but we'll have some things in here that we'll address uh, if you're a long-time SOLIDWORKS as well, uh, user as well. And uh, maybe you've got some legacy data out there and, um, you know, not sure what to do with it or not maybe utilizing it. So this is our, our roadmap. Um, what we're going to walk through is how to sort those legacy files. How big is the playing field? How many files are we talking about? Um, insert or import. Uh, I'll have some, a couple of quick videos to show you on that, uh, some, some functionality that SOLIDWORKS offers. What do I get after moving data into SOLIDWORKS? So, um, we want to make sure that expectations are set properly. And then from there, once I get some data into SOLIDWORKS, uh, I might need to clean it up. So uh, we'll briefly touch on those uh, topics and also how to make changes to that geometry. Some A few things that SOLIDWORKS offers uh, once we've got some geometry brought in from um, another CAD system. So this is somehow, uh, sometimes how the conversation gets started. We need to translate all of our legacy CAD files, and we have 80,000 of them. In most cases, this is not true. Um, it's just somebody has taken a number off of a file system somewhere, and that's the number that, that they're reporting. In reality, you're going to uh, want to translate somewhere on the spectrum between nothing and everything, right? Where you are on that spectrum is uh, kind of up to you, and we've got some questions to help guide that decision. So how many files do we need to translate? What can I use from my legacy CAD system? So some questions you're going to ask yourself are, what are my current projects? What, what are we currently involved with? Um, are there standard products that we want to have ready in whatever our current CAD system is? And then, do you own the legacy software? So we'll get into that a little bit as well. With regards to what are the current projects, you may want to finish these in your legacy software, and the timing here is usually the driver. So uh, either the timing of when the project needs to be finished, or if there's something pushing you along from a maintenance perspective, like you are due to pay your maintenance on the current CAD software or something along those lines will help determine um, should we keep going on this project or that project with our current uh, legacy software or not? Secondly is, do you own a copy of the legacy software? Or you could also ask the question, uh, can we keep access to the legacy software? So whether you're on a uh, subscription basis or you uh, own the software, you may want to keep a copy of that around um, to make minor changes or to view things. Um, but all your new projects, uh, you're going to, at some point, put a stake in the ground and say, from here on forward, you know, we're going to use um, SOLIDWORKS because that's the, the CAD system we've chose, chosen to, to move forward with. With regards to what your standard product products are, you may have libraries that you've built up over the years of regularly used standard products. And these could be yours, or these could be uh, things that you utilize, things that you purchase, but you put into your designs. And you may need to have those in SOLIDWORKS. So you're going to take the time uh, to upgrade those into SOLIDWORKS. Future translations, things that we might, tra might want to translate in the future, products that are in maintenance mode or things that are in previous versions. You know, do we need to have access to those in SOLIDWORKS, or can we just uh, use a copy of the legacy CAD system to, uh, to maintain that, those, those files? So there's uh, another point in, in time that you're going to need to address. From there, you can kind of do things on an as-needed basis. You know, you um, try to group things uh, as we've discussed so far, but then 
there's always going to be things that come up and you move them from we thought we didn't need that to yes we do need that and you're going to take some time to uh, to move those from the legacy system to SOLIDWORKS. You might get down to this point in time and say we've asked all these questions and we still have a number a large number of files that we want to to utilize in SOLIDWORKS how do we get them into SOLIDWORKS? Uh, well we can put you in touch with some third-party vendors that specialize in this sort of thing a couple of them here that we've used in the past are Elysium and ITI, International Technic Group Incorporated. So uh, if you still get down to it and you still have thousands and thousands of files, um, we can work with you to try and help get those um, translated over to be able to use that data that you've put uh, time and effort into. Okay, so that's our first step. Just a little recap. You know, the first thing you want to do is identify and translate only your current projects or most critical files. Right? These are the things that you're into most often. How quickly do we need to uh, be able to get those into SOLIDWORKS to use them? Um, retain access to the, your legacy system. If you have minor changes or you just want to look at some stuff, uh, that's a good thing to keep uh, that around. And then translate as an, uh, on an as-needed basis or enlist uh, third-party help if, the, if you just have so many files um, that it would be more efficient to do that. Okay, so that is kind of defining the playing field. How many legacy files do we have and are they all obsolete? It's kind of determined by those questions. The next thing we want to talk about is inserting or importing. So this is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, a couple of years ago, SOLIDWORKS introduced this uh, feature called 3D Interconnect. And what it'll allow you to do is simply insert uh, files into an assembly as if they were SOLIDWORKS files. I'm going to show you this in a second so you'll get to see firsthand what this is like. It creates a link to the original file. And this is for when we're not interested in making any changes to this geometry uh, or minor changes or maybe this is files that my, my vendor is using and, and I don't want to translate these every time. So I think you'll, if you haven't seen 3D Interconnect yet, uh, you'll enjoy seeing that. Importing is for cases when we're going to make substantial modifications to the file or we don't want to link to the original, um, you know, this is going to be a SOLIDWORKS file moving forward. So we're just going to uh, port that over into a SOLIDWORKS file. And um, when we do that, we want to make sure that we check the geometry and clean anything up because there's always things that happen during that translation process. So let's take a look at an example here of 3D Interconnect. So we have a little flashlight here, and we're going to insert uh, some batteries into this. So just like we would with any other SOLIDWORKS part, we're going to go out and find the file. In this case, it's going to be an inventor part. And we just click Open. And about that quickly, you're going to be able to insert that part into your design. So you see it there in the feature tree. And what we're doing now is um, creating mates and positioning these batteries, however we might do that in this design. So it's not just a graphical representation. You're actually choosing surfaces um, that have been brought in. And in this case, we're going to make a change to one of our SOLIDWORKS parts in the assembly and base that off of position of one of these batteries. So we're going to change the extrusion depth from a blind condition to up to surface, and it's going to, we're going to tie it to uh, one of the surfaces on, the, on one of those batteries. Now let's simulate um, an update. So let's say this is a part that you get from your vendor. Uh, they've made an update, and they send you the new file. So it's exactly the same file name. We're just going to uh, copy and paste right over top of it to indicate that this uh, file has been updated. What happens then in SOLIDWORKS? So we come back to our uh, assembly uh, and allow it to update. We come to the battery uh, components and we right click and tell uh, SOLIDWORKS we need to update this model. So all of the uh, batteries that we've placed in here, we've got several copies of them. You can see how it automatically has updated the assembly, that depth of extrusion is updated automatically because we, we tied those together. The width, however, we didn't do, uh, make something tied to that, so we'll manually change that dimension. So this is basically how you might use 3D Interconnect to quickly import, or I shouldn't say in, import, but insert parts that you really don't intend to change. Or uh, there are some ways to make minor modifications, and we can show you more of that 
uh, if you want to get offline with us on that. All right, let's take a look at if I want to import some geometry. In this case, we're using an IGES file, but we can import lots and lots of things. So um, whether it's an IGES file or a Pro-E file or Parasolid, uh, this is all going to kind of work the same. What we saw highlighted there was uh, an option to automatically check um, the part using import diagnostics. So anytime you're importing something, um, we want to go through this process. Now, it's found something wrong with the face. Let's see where it is. We can visually inspect it and see it doesn't really look like there's much wrong. General geometry problem, that doesn't tell us much. But we've got some tools here that we can manually use to repair or delete. But SOLIDWORKS has some nice automated tools to uh, try and repair that. A lot of times it's just a gap or something isn't quite lining up in the eighth decimal place. So we let SOLIDWORKS take care of that. And now we're ready to go. And what we've got in the feature tree is just the geometry. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. But that's what we would expect to see in a case of importing geometry. And there's no link to any other files. We're good to go to save this as a SOLIDWORKS file and move forward. So with inserting or importing, if we're going to insert, we're going to be using 3D Interconnect. It's easy. You just open the file as like, like if it was a SOLIDWORKS file. And this is for cases where we don't want to make any changes or any significant changes to geometry. We just need to insert it into our design. Importing geometry, uh, we're going to go through some steps here to inspect the geometry um, and make sure it's clean and, and ready to go. We also want to uh, use this if we're making significant changes and we don't want any links back to the original or legacy CAD file. So that's the difference between inserting and importing. What do I get after I move data into SOLIDWORKS? So um, when we're using 3D Interconnect, this slide is just to help you understand what works with 3D Interconnect. Everything from ASUS, IGES, JT, Inventor, CATIA, NX, SOLIDEDGE, PROE, and STEP, and all of the associated versions there. The only one to point out is CATIA, it's V5, and you have to have SOLIDWORKS Premium to be able to access that. All the rest come with SOLIDWORKS Standard. Okay, so that's for using 3D Interconnect. If we're going to import those files, um, we've got a few others that we're going to tack on here, including Parasolid, ASUS, Rhino, and DXF for DWG. So um, there are a few others, but these are the main ones uh, that we have. And if you've got something that you uh, want to question, just shoot me an email, and I can tell you if it's uh, able to be able to use it uh, as an import. What do I get after I import a part? Basically, geometry. Um, when I use 3D Interconnect, I can also get custom properties, unconsumed sketches and curves, and material properties. With assemblies, I get the assembly structure, the components, which is the parts in the positions, but no mates. So if you're bringing that over from another 3D CAD system, those mates don't come along for the ride. You have to access those or apply those in SOLIDWORKS once you have them over. Um, with regards to drawings for your 3D parts, you can import those as a DWG or DXF, but there's no link to the part. Uh, in other words, uh, you could import the part and you could import the drawing, and they wouldn't talk to each other like you would normally expect if you had done that um, from scratch in SOLIDWORKS, right? You make a change to the part and drawing updates. That, that doesn't happen here. Some of our third-party vendors uh, can make this happen. So if that's an important thing uh, to do and you have a lot of those types of files, uh, talk with us and we can um, you know, work with you to help uh, work with, with those 30 third parties to get that done and, and see what, uh, what that would take. If you only have 2D drawings, in other words, you've got lots of DWGs and DXFs out there, um, you can import those as a SOLIDWORKS drawing. But if that's what you're going to do, we would not recommend that you do that. We'd instead recommend that you use a, product, um, a free product that we offer called DraftSite. And you can make changes to those 2D drawings uh, from there. And a lot of times, that's all you need to do. You don't really need to take your 2D drawings into SOLIDWORKS. Uh, they're just fine where they're at, and there's no reason to convert them into a 3D part. If you are interested in that, I'm going to show you a little video here next um, uh, how that works. So I want to import this and use it as a sketch uh, to build a, a 3D part. So let's jump in and see how that works. So in this case, we're opening a DWG file, 
and we get a little wizard that says, hey, do you want to create a drawing uh, or import into new part? So we'll select the second option. Uh, the wizard here, we're going to choose which um, uh, units we want to use, and then we can turn off the different layers maybe that we don't need. We just need the geometry. Some other things here to do a little cleanup if we need to. Uh, we're going to hit the Finish button and, and get right into SOLIDWORKS. So uh, we'll take a look here, and definitely it is a 2D uh, file. We get this nice little toolbar, 2D to 3D, and we can window select some of this geometry and put it on different sketch planes. So we did the, the front first. We do the top and the right. And notice on the top and the right, it rotates that into the proper planes. And we've got some additional geometry that we don't need, and we'll get rid of that. Take a look at it now. You can see that it's not really lined up uh, the way we want. So before we leave this toolbar, we're going to do a couple of alignments here because um, that will greatly help us with regards to what we can do with uh, this geometry to create our 3D part. So quickly we'll align those and we'll see that they're in the same plane in those two directions. And um, we'll be ready to do an extrusion at this point. So take that 2D geometry, turn it into 3D. Here's how it happens. Uh, we're going to take that sketch. We've found some other contours here that we might want to include to find the sketch depth or the extrusion depth by uh, a point on the other sketch that we have. And right away, we've got some uh, a part that we could use. We'll go ahead and finish this off, trim off the top with a um, sketch in the right plane. And we're in business with regards to having a 3D part without doing a lot of work. Uh, to create that sketch geometry. So if you have parts that are generally straightforward, it, it won't take you very long to convert from 2D to 3D. Uh, if it's a more complex part, you might just start from scratch and draw it in SOLIDWORKS yourself. It may take less time, actually, to do that and uh, just draw it off the, the 2D drawing that you've already got. So um, once you do a couple of these, you, you'll get a feel for what should be just drawn over and which you could bring in with this method right here. OK, we've answered the question, what do I get after I move data into SOLIDWORKS? We've got some tools now to clean up this geometry. This is just a list here that most we're, we're mostly going to see uh, in, in the video demonstration. But let's say that we brought um, some files in and you know the automated tools that we talked about earlier didn't really correct the issues. So this is an example of what you could do. In this case, it comes in as a surface, and it's not a solid. We're going to try to use the automated tools to close up any gaps or heal any faces uh, that may have some issues. And we're going to find that, uh, in this case, we've got a face that is just not going to respond to these tools, to these automated tools. So we're going to have to do the repair ourselves. And it's that little uh, face highlighted in blue. So we do actually have a solid now, if you take a quick look at the feature tree. And what we're going to do is uh, take some of the existing geometry and just copy it. And you'll see um, how we're going to use that to recreate some geometry. So three different surfaces there we made a copy of. Uh, now we have some surface bodies and a solid. We're going to hide the surface bodies and then uh, delete some of these faces. Now, we just had the one, uh, but we're going to delete some of these others uh, and recreate them. Okay, So it's just easier this way to um, kind of delete a, a number of surfaces here and come back to those surfaces that we copied. And we're going to modify those so that they uh, we can trim one against the other. So if this is demonstrating some of the surfacing capabilities uh, that you might be utilizing in this sort of situation. You bring in your step file in this case. Uh, the geometry won't clean up, doesn't look right. Uh, we, we need it to, to be clean because downstream, uh, you know, we have CNC programs or things like this that are going to be reliant on these surfaces. So we need to have good surfaces. So in this step, we're just simply trimming um, the surfaces against each other so that we can get some nice clean corners. We're going to apply a fillet to these surfaces. So give you an idea of um, what 
sort of cleanup this is going to take. So um, this is a fairly straightforward example here, but the process would be the same uh, no matter how many surfaces you need to clean up. Um, you're going to make a decision on how important that is. So we've got two surfaces at this point. We're going to sew them together and create a solid. And then we're in business with our clean 3D geometry. So in cases where you've brought it in from uh, your legacy CAD system, and that could be from a neutral file format like STEP or IGES, or it could just be the native file format, you're, you should expect to have issues um, that either the automated tools will clean up, hopefully. If not, uh, you may need to take some time uh, to recreate some surfaces and um, get yourself back to a clean solid so that you know, you're ready to go. All right, so that was a quick look at tools to clean up geometry. And then uh, how can we make some changes to this geometry? So we don't have a feature tree. Um, what does SOLIDWORKS have to offer? So these are some tools that um, uh, we're going to be able to utilize on this part to recreate the feature tree or make some simple changes just directly. So uh, let's jump in here and take a look at what that looks like. In this case, we're opening uh, an, an IGES file, and we'll go through that same process where we need to verify uh, the geometry. So we're going to use our import diagnostics to do that. Use the automated tool here. Try to heal those up. That's going to work. So I'm going to right-click on the one feature that we have, imported one, go down and select feature works. Feature works uh, will deconstruct this model and recreated it with sketches and features as if we had drawn it from scratch in SOLIDWORKS. This tool works fairly well on prismatic parts like this. Um, if you have a lot of organic surfaces, um, you, you may need to just figure on redrawing a lot of uh, the geometry that you've got. But when FeatureWorks uh, does work, it does, you know, it's pretty slick. Uh, you can see it being built right in front of your eyes here. So this is the, the model now has a full feature tree, uh, has sketches and uh, you know features in the feature tree as if you had built it yourself. And, and you can rewind that and begin to you know make changes to that. Let's go back to our imported model and go through that a different way. So uh, the automated tool is not always going to work. So we also have an interactive mode so that maybe you can get most of the model uh, to uh, be recreated. And we're going to do this in reverse. So if you think about how you might have uh, drawn this part in 3D, you're probably going to put the fillets on last. So that's going to be the first thing that we try to recognize while using FeatureWorks in interactive mode. So we'll go out and grab those fillets. And as it's recognized, you'll see that the, the geometry updates in the window. So we know where we stand with what geometry still needs to be recognized. Those three holes we can do in one go. And then we've got a couple of extrudes here uh, that we want to take care of. And what we'll end up with is another fully featured model, uh, just like we did with the automated version. And um, it'll go through the same process here of creating the sketch planes and the sketches and doing the, the, the extrudes and the holes and the fillets and build the model um, like we built it from scratch. OK. So that's pretty nice. Rewind that, go back and, and insert other features in between using the rollback bar, just like you would in any other um, SOLIDWORKS model. We've got one more way that we could use FeatureWorks. So we're going to switch back to our imported model one more time. And this time, maybe we just need some information. We just want to make a change to that one hole. We're going to right click on it and click on Edit Feature as if it were a feature uh, that we had built. And what FeatureWorks does is just um, provide a feature for that one hole. Now, so the feature tree, if you take a look at it, you've got the imported feature, and then you've got uh, the, the whole feature. This next option down on the lower right, maybe I just need to move that, translate it you know, 20 millimeters in the x direction or along some edge. Uh, we can do that with Move Face. Move face is now a feature in the feature tree that I can make modifications to. It puts a little dimension out there, and we can dynamically change that if we want. But we didn't need to reconstruct the whole model 
in order to be able to do that. If I just need to make a change, in this case, I want to delete this face and maybe put in a different hole or, or maybe a slot or something like that. Delete face has some options that will not only delete the face, but patch up the remaining geometry, which is really nice. Next thing we want to demonstrate is maybe you've got some other geometry altogether. We're going to create a surface here that we would uh, want some of this, uh, this uh, extrusion on the top to uh, take that shape. So we can replace faces with uh, a new face that we've either imported or drawn in SOLIDWORKS here. We're going to say these faces that we've selected should be replaced with this face. So just like that, uh, we've made a modification to our geometry without having to have a full feature tree. And we can use some of the other uh, things that we have here we showed earlier, like delete face, and then we're free to come in and apply a new fillet on here, uh, the size that we like. So we've got some nice tools that's, uh, along the direct editing route where I don't have to have a full feature tree if there's only certain things that I'm looking to do. So you bring your CAD geometry over from your legacy system, and you can make quite a few changes to it uh, without having to have uh, the full feature tree. I didn't have to redraw this from scratch, and I didn't have to fight with uh, feature works to get it to build the full feature tree. So that's another example there. So we showed you feature works, move face, delete face, and replace face. So maybe those are um, you know, some tools that if you've been a SOLIDWORKS user, you, know, you haven't tried much or didn't know were there. Uh, so um, make sure to take a look at those. So we were scheduled for about 25 minutes, so we're, we're looking good on time. Um, but this is just a, a wrap up here as far as the steps that you're going to go through. I've got this legacy data. What can I do with it? Do I have to throw it in the trash and install it all over? Um, not really. Uh, you can probably get quite a bit of use out of it. But the first thing you want to do is sort that legacy data. Translate or bring into SOLIDWORKS only the most important files. Put that at the top of your list. Um, get help if you've just got so many files that um, you, you know, are, you're going to be required to bring over into SOLIDWORKS. Get some third-party help on those. Uh, the next thing we looked at was inserting or importing. So 3D Interconnect will allow you to insert third-party CAD files uh, without doing any translation stuff. You know, if you don't need to change things or you have very minor changes, uh, you can just simply insert that file into your SOLIDWORKS design. If you want to import, we showed some tools there on how to uh, make sure that you've got good, clean geometry and then how to clean those up. Uh, we explained what you get after moving data into SOLIDWORKS. For parts, generally you're going to just get geometry. Assembly, you're going to get the position but no mates. And then drawings, um, you know, it's a static drawing. So you're probably going to do your drawing over again is the bottom line. Unless, of course, you get some of those uh, third-party vendors to help with that. They can uh, keep that, um, that relationship between the part and the drawing as it's being brought over to SOLIDWORKS. So uh, ask us more questions about that if that's something that you've got on your plate. Uh, we showed you some tools to clean up geometry. You want to make sure that your geometry is valid, right? If you've got 3D parts, you want to make sure you, you've got a solid and not a surface. Uh, as our example showed initially, we, we ended up with a surface on uh, initial uh, import, so clean that up. And then once we've got some geometry in SOLIDWORKS, do I have to have a full feature tree? Well, you can. Uh, we've got some tools to attempt that. I'm not going to tell you that it works 100% of the time um, because it doesn't, but uh, we've got a number of other tools to make some quick changes uh, to your geometry without having to have that feature tree and, and having to start all over. So there's quite a bit that you can do with your legacy data. It's not obsolete. Um, you know, and, and the only other thing is to maybe keep that legacy CAD system around. If you own it, that's easy. Uh, have a workstation with that installed that everybody can have access to. Otherwise, if you're on a subscription model, maybe you, you keep, uh, you know, a login handy. So um, you can go back and look at um, some of those legacy files or make minor changes to that. Okay, that's going to wrap things up. We'll take any questions that you've got here. We've got another slide to... Uh, talk about some upcoming events that you uh, that we have on tap with regards to other webinars. So hang on uh, for that. I'll throw that up on the screen. All right. We do have a couple of questions, Chris. So the first one is, uh, do you know of a third-party software other than ProEngineer that can open a native ProE drawing file? 
so that it may be saved as a PDF. So this would be a drawing file, and that's always the, the trick for those on, right? Like parts and assemblies, there's quite a bit of interchange between CAD products, but when you get to the drawing file, reading a native Proe drawing file, I'm not aware of anything that would do that unless it's already been saved out as a DXF or a PDF from that native system. That's generally what has to happen there. Our eDrawings tool can uh, open up Proe parts and assemblies certain versions of it. Chris, is that included in the regular e-drawings as far as parts and assemblies? Yes. Yeah, so, but the drawings, no, it does not do that. Um, there was a tool called AutoView, and I think it's been renamed and it's been bought by Oracle. So there was a product that they had that was a viewer, and you could view, and it was the only one that I knew of that would view, like at one point it viewed Katia drawings and it viewed other drawings. But it's been a few years since I've um, looked into that. But for the ones asking there, um, you might check what used to be called AutoView. I know that product got bought by Oracle. I think it still has uh, the same name. The, the company that actually developed eDrawings, I think they, uh, and it's, um, the name is slipping my mind at the moment, but Geometric Solutions. HCL, I think they were Geometric yes. Solutions and they got yes. bought by HCL or something like that. Look on their website. I'm pretty sure uh, that I ran across something uh, several months back that, that might be a solution there. Uh, otherwise, I will just um, concur with what Scott has said. And, uh, you know, you, your main best bet is to try and export that as a, as a DXF or DWG. And then you can learn about the various eDrawings uh, viewers and eDrawings packages at eDrawingsViewer.com. That's where I usually go um, because there are eDrawings type uh, eDrawings packages for the other products, not just SOLIDWORKS, even though it is SOLIDWORKS, sort of a commissioned and known product. Um, I'm going to put that out here as well, eDrawingsViewer.com. You can learn more about some of those eDrawings. Uh, yeah, I found, uh, I found the name of the file here. Let's send this to everyone. It's called Globius. It's kind of a funny name. Okay, yes, I'm aware of them. But um, check those out. I don't know, uh, just off the cuff, that it might be, uh, it might be a solution. All right, let's see. Let me check out for us some other questions. After inserting a part, you decide you need to modify it. Can you easily change it to import? Yes. Um, you can right-click on the uh, – well, first you would open it in its own window, and then there's a uh, right mouse button menu that you would break that link because um, that gets created automatically, and then it turns into – just like you had imported it. So you'll get a, a feature in the feature tree that says imported, and you take it from there. Yeah, and I believe that that functionality is new for 2018 to be open. When we first introduced 3D Interconnect, you can really break the link and get it back to sort of that imported body state very well. So that's um, some functionality that they've added. So if you haven't tried that recently, just right-click on the very top feature and, um, yeah, break that link, and now you've got import diagnostics. You can run feature works, those kind of things, because it's, uh, it's broken from the file. All right, let's see. Um, somebody, um, so, uh, somebody mentioned that they use Connexus to create PDFs for use in the factory but have challenges with it. Do you know of any other system that could work better or um, would eDrawings work better? So as far as creating PDFs, so um, uh, Chuck, if you could give us a little more idea of how you're using those PDFs and are you talking about producing 2D drawings from SOLIDWORKS. So, Chris, what are our options to get a PDF out of SOLIDWORKS, out of the box, and then uh, any third parties that you're aware of that give us other functionalities? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, SOLIDWORKS does offer the option to save as PDF, and maybe you've gone down that road and, and uh, you know, didn't quite give you all the functionality you needed. I'm, it's not, I'm not real sure what issues you're running into. Um, so I'd definitely start there. Uh, and then from from there, um, y you know, if you needed some 3D type of um, information, you know, you might take a look at our MBD um, uh, licensing. Uh, we've got some some nice um, functionality there to put uh, the ability to have a 3D model inside of a, a PDF document. So, yeah, if you if you want to shoot me an email and and kind of give me an idea of what limitations or things you're running into, I'd, I'd be happy to try and address that offline. Chris, do you, Chris, do you know if Bluebeam, Bluebeam was the partner a few years ago, um, and I'll put their address in here in the box, in the chat window for everybody, that specializes in PDF, and they used to have a SOLIDWORKS add-in. I don't know if they've still done that. I see a lot of architectural stuff. I'm browsing their website now. 
um, but they have a product called Bluebeam Review that used to connect with CAD tools. So they may still have a SolidWorks integration. They had all kinds of options for producing and creating uh, PDF files. Um, don't forget, you can also go to the SolidWorks website, and there's a partner section. So if you're looking for PDF publishing, um, the partner se the partner uh, section of the website might be a good place to go to as well. I'll usually check that out before I go too far. While we're still uh, taking questions, I'm going to go ahead and flip forward to um, uh, the slide with our upcoming events in case you're interested in those and hanging out uh, to get that information. But, uh, Scott, mm -hmm. do we have any more questions? Um, just Chuck responded. He uses these PDFs pretty much just like a print. So those are used maybe on the shop floor or whatever. SolidWorks will save a PDF of a drawing out. Um, so that uh, should be native functionality that we can produce that PDF there. Um, if there's something special you're wanting to do with it, you know, I would check out Bluebeam, check out the uh, partner website, and see if there's any specialized PDF uh, tools out there. All right, so that's it for the questions. So thank you all for those. Um, yeah, just run through the upcoming events that we've got coming up, Chris. Uh, so these are next uh, month or so. Um, coming up on the 19th is DriveWorks Design Automation Webcast. Uh, we've got a, a session on uh, the 21st for achieving extreme uh, SOLIDWORKS performance. If you're looking for modeling methodology tips, you want to try and attend that one. Uh, on the 26th, we've got uh, some scanning with our CREAFORM tools, so uh, learn how to, you can use that in your inspection process. Mm -hmm. On July 12th is uh, uh, information about uh, MBD, the thing that I just mentioned, model-based definition, what is it and why should I care about that. And then on the 19th, um, we've got uh, a lot of tools that you may not even be aware of uh, that you own. They're called Express Tools, so I um, want to jump in on that one on the 19th. All right. Um, very good. I, I just was reading back through the questions, and I think, uh, Chuck, if you're still on. So he was asking um, about PDF or would e-drawings be better. Chris, what are the benefits of, because usually uh, folks want to publish the drawings out and share them to people that don't have SolidWorks. What do you see as the differentiators between using PDF versus maybe using e-drawings as that go-to tool for those folks that don't have a license to SolidWorks? Well, I think um, everybody in the world is born with PDF uh, installed, so <laughs> uh, that's definitely a benefit there. Um, e-drawings would have to be installed, or you could send a package where uh, the file size is a little larger, but it kind of sends the program along with it. E-Drawings gives you a little more access to the 3D data. Um, we do have things that we can do in the, on the PDF side and the 3D space as well. But those are usually the differences. You know, it's just generally PDFs are more ubiquitous and, and people have access to that easily uh, versus the E-Drawings that, you know, may take an extra step to, to install. All right, yeah, thanks. Appreciate the, that answer. Sure. All right. Well, that wraps it up for today. We thank you all for your time. And, uh, again, if you have any questions on legacy data and uh, moving from CAD or if you're merging another company in and you're having to deal with this as a CAD administrator, as a lead engineer or, or whatever, it's something that we do on a very regular basis. And, um, you know, so tackling that for your first time can be a little challenging. So we're more than, uh, more than capable to help with that. So just uh, let one of us know, and we'd be glad to help. Chris, thanks for your time in preparing today and for delivering that. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thanks.